Hi guys, welcome back to the Building the Backhand series. Hopefully at this point, you have worked on your coil and we are ready to work into that position via the X step. Let's get started. Now the X step or the cross step, when done properly, is a great way to add momentum into the throw. When done poorly, it's a great way to get the disc behind you early and lose all accuracy and probably power as well. If you've been struggling with the X step for a long time and this video helps you, I would just ask that maybe you consider if you're going to buy another disc in the future, when you buy that disc, you would check out our store and see if we have it. So the X step, we're talking about this step right here, this cross step, it's a cross behind step. To get through here properly, we need to create a little cubby. So a little cubby behind your lead knee, me as a right-hander, that would be my right knee. So we need to create space here so that we can get our back leg through forward. Remember, we're trying to add momentum forward into the shot not veer left or right with the shot. Now to create that cubby, we need two things. One, we need a stagger. So that is to say that if I'm a right-handed person, my right foot is going to be more left on the tee pad than my left foot is. The amount of stagger here is gonna vary person to person. But the goal here is to let this back knee pass behind and have room to pass behind this front knee. This is a piece that gets a lot of people in trouble. If you have no stagger here and your feet are in line, now what has to happen is your knee cannot go through the other knee. So then we get into this move here where it goes here and says, oh, you're not gonna move? Well, I'll just go around. And now your hips turn back early. This would give you the problem of an early reach back. Sometimes we also call this walking backwards. From this perspective, imagine you're holding your disc or hold your disc. So if I don't stagger, the disc naturally wants to be in front of my body here. If I was carrying any object, it would naturally want to be here. So if I don't stagger, disc is still here. And now I get here, what has to happen is my hips are gonna turn back because this has to create a path. And now what happens, I did not move my arm, did not move anything upper body wise. My hips just turned me backwards here. And now when I go into this final step, my disc is already partially in the reach back, right? So this is where people say, oh, I've got an early reach back because now I can only extend so far and I'm waiting. That's actually a footwork problem, an X step problem. And then this is going to create some arm path issues later. It's right, so the same thing from the side, no stagger, turn back here. Now if I coil, the disc is too far behind me, can't travel through the body, has to go around, and now I don't get the hand swinging inside like this. The hand starts swinging outside, which is going to cost you spin and accuracy. So to avoid that problem, we need a little stagger. How much? You're going to have to toy with that, but a little bit of stagger here to where you can continually go through like this. Too much stagger and you get this issue where you're teeter-tottering forward and backwards. This is not putting momentum towards our line. It's taking away from it. Too little, and you run into the problem that we just mentioned, where your hips have to turn too far back. So play with that, but we need stagger as the first thing. Second thing, posture. So to get through here and to create this cubby, we need this knee to be bent and we need good posture to get through here. So there are four things that we're looking for with the posture. Thing number one, is we're going to bend the knees. The other thing is we've got this bend at the hips. Another way of saying this is butt out, right? This one, people struggle with a bunch. You have got to stick your butt out there. You're not doing it enough. People who have posture problems, this is the big one. Other thing, this will probably put you, and if it doesn't, you need to do this, with your chest over your knees or nose over your toes. Now we're playing here. And now it should also put you on your toes. I can lift up my heels very easily. So those four things, again, knees bent, butt out, chest over the knees, and we're towards the toes. This is just a very athletic position. You know, hike the football, getting ready to return a serve in volleyball or return a serve in tennis. You've seen this before. So with those two things, now we can get through cleanly. We 
do our little bit of stagger. We pop down into that posture, and now we've got all the room here to get through without turning too far backwards. What is too far backwards? Don't get too hyper fixated on this. I hear people mention to me a lot, oh, I'm working on my footwork. I'm trying to get this left foot perpendicular to the target. That's like the very edge of the range. You almost see nobody going exactly 90 degrees off the target. The range here really is perpendicular to maybe even 45 degrees back, depending on a couple things. Hip mobility, one. If you're very flexible, you can get away with putting that foot further back. The other thing is just naturally, how do your feet sit with your body? Mine are very straight, just standing here normally. For some of you, your feet are gonna flare out a little bit. For others, they're gonna flare in a little bit. So don't get hyper fixated on this. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to not turn the hips too far back and get the disc behind us as principle one. Principle two is to be able to get through here and balance. That's what we're headed towards is a balanced move here, which we practiced in the coil video, right? But if you're struggling to get through this X step again, I like my players to go through their right step and then hit this left step and if they're postured correctly, they should be able to stop in balance here at a slow speed. So if you wanna just start there, stand shoulder width apart, and then just lift up your lead leg, you should feel balance on this leg. And now you know the position that we're headed towards. So note when you're balancing on one leg, if you're doing it like a normal human being, you're not going to be locked out with your leg and your weight's not gonna to be towards your heel, right? You're gonna kinda of sink down into this leg a little bit. It's gonna be on your toe. Your butt's gonna be a little bit out to keep you balanced and your chest is gonna be over your knees or your nose over your toes, right? So that's the position that we're headed to. Balance comes from good posture and that's the important thing. We wanna make sure that we put our momentum forward towards our shot and we wanna make sure that we have good balance going through the X step. So again, don't get fixated on the angle of the foot. There's a lot of wiggle room here and people do this very differently because the way that their body operates to maintain balance is different. Let me give you a couple drills that you can use here and there to make sure that we're getting through this cleanly. One is kind of the infinite X step drill. As it sounds, I'm going to X step infinitely. Find your line, create your little stagger, get your posture and we're just going to kind of karaoke our way down here without the hips going crazy. It's gonna take a little while. <laughs> here we go. Gotta find the next part of the line. <laughs> Got my glitch. <sighs> don't know about you, I worked up a little bit of a sweat. Of course, we're balanced athletes, so don't just go one way, go back the other way. So now I'm a lefty. All my PT friends are like, yes, he's doing the good things. We're doing the good things. Getting close to the camera. So I have to make sure I'm doing it accurately. Even lefty. <sighs> Dude, your calf gets worked in there a little bit too. Yep. Would've been nice if it was a basketball court instead, <laughs> instead of a full length soccer field. So that's one thing you can do. You can also try to get through here and get to that same position we worked on via the coil video. So we're gonna go get our stagger, get our posture, right, left, and hold. This gives us two things. This is dual purpose here. It's kind of a litmus test for our balance. Are we balanced at this point? If not, we gotta start over. The other thing is it lets us task switch in practice getting into the coil. There, right, like we already practiced. So this one goes right, left, and hold. Task switch to the coil portion, coil. Good to go. Now, that is the function or the form of the X step, but much more important than actually having the mechanic down is the rhythm. So, let's get a little musical here. After you get through the X step, it's not good enough. You gotta make sure that you're not doing this kind of straight rhythm where it goes right, left, right. So if you go in a straight rhythm and all your steps are exactly the same time, you're not gonna build a good swing. There's not gonna be a good rhythm there. Right, left, right. Right, left, right. 
That's uh, the bad rhythm would be jingle bells, jingle bells. This is not Christmas. So don't do that one. The good rhythm is like right, left, right. I do love a good swing rhythm. No, this rhythm, if you need to remember, would be more like da 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 Right? You're a Jedi now. So it needs to be rhythmic. Right, left, right. And we want a longer period of time on that left step because we got a lot of stuff to do. If we rush and force this right step to happen. We don't have enough time for the coil. We gotta go right, left, and it's almost as if we don't even take a final step. We just fall, and our momentum that we built previously carries us forward on that last step. So we talked in the brace video about kind of vertical people and more horizontal people. So Philo is a great example of this. Look how he uses his left here. He gets really tall on this left and rises so that he can fall, right? If we're trying to put a lot of force into this front leg, it doesn't make sense really to fall from a short height. You're not gonna have that much there. But if you can get tall on this left leg, now you've got this big fall. So we go right, left, boom. And you kind of fall from a higher height, giving a more power. It's kind of like a pole vaulter. We go right, left, and now we're kind of whoo, over the bar, waiting to hit the mat. So that's kind of style one. Same rhythm with both styles I'm gonna show you here, but that's style one. We go right, left, boom. Or sometime I use the rhythm, um, instead of saying right, left, I say um, right, turn, right? Because we're not turning before this, but once we get our weight on our left, now we turn. So we use all of that fall time to turn as far back as possible with the coil, and then boom, once we hit, it's go time. If you're more vertical, obviously this is more of a glide feel across the floor. So we're still going right, left, but we might be a little bit lower. We might not pop up during the left. We just kind of bypass this right foot here. We kind of go right, left, and then forward. And then we use that glide time again to coil and get back. But you might stay a little bit lower. So find out what feel works for you there stylistically. Both are very acceptable, obviously. Tons of people doing this. The second one would be more like Simon Lazat, how he kind of glides through this step here. So that's it for the X step. Next time we're going to build on the walk up completely and get you through the entire walk up. Practice it mechanically at first, then afterwards, make sure that you're getting these basic principles that make throws actually good. It can look fine mechanically, but if the rhythm's off and the posture slash balance is not there, you're going to really struggle getting a clean throw. It's just gonna feel all wonky, which is fine at first when it's mechanical, but Take the time here to go through the mechanical, make sure it doesn't go awry, and then as soon as you have that down, make it fluid. This video came from experience of me coaching people one-on-one. -on -one. So if you would like a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, Patreon, the link is in the description below, and I'll see some of you on there. Thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time for the full walk-up video. Peace.